Hey guys, welcome back. In this week's video, we're gonna look at one of the most critical aircraft in the UNSC's arsenal. It was pivotal for their survival against the Covenant, but at the same time, it's, it's one of the most obscure. And outside of the books and a few cutscenes, there's not many mentions of it. Of course, I'm talking about the Mighty Longsword. The Longsword's history in Halo is lengthy. It dates all the way back to Halo CE, the first game. And if you remember, that's exactly how Master Chief was able to escape the ring before it was destroyed. The specific version he fled on was the C-709, the most prolific. But in the time since, the UNSC has come out with several variants. You have the C-712, more of an air dominance and space dominance fighter. Then you have the 718, which is more of a strike asset, a bomber. Both of them are capable of doing each other's roles, they're just more specialized to be better at one versus the other. Specifically, the C-712 has a crew of two, a pilot, and how they refer to as a sensor technician, more of like a weapons officer. It's 110 feet long, 101 feet wide, and weighs 396,000 pounds. But if that sounds like a lot, you'd be shocked with the 718. The C-718 has a crew of four, a pilot, co-pilot, navigator, and weapons operator. Now it's 121 feet long, still maintaining that same width of 101 feet, but it weighs a whopping 590,000 pounds, which for a fighter and strike asset is actually quite a bit. The added weight is because of the different armaments. The C-712 has eight electromagnetic coil guns, which are like rail guns, but the 718 only has four, and that's because, like I said, the difference is in application. The coil guns being excellent at air dominance fighting, in at least close range purposes, versus using it to strike the surface. Each carries four anti-ship missiles, shield busters is how they're referred to in the lore, meant to punch through Covenant shields. The C-718 has the added benefit of a 110mm autocannon, which is humongous. I mean, most conventional fighter and strike assets don't carry a gun that big. In addition to the big gun, it also has the Shiva nuke missile system. And so that's a heavy hitting tactical nuclear warhead meant to really take down capital ships, plus aerial denial assets like mines, and then smart munitions, different variations of bombs. The lower listen is being capable of things like imaging warheads, which uses algorithms to search for an image similar to what it's been programmed to look for. Things like radar and lidar guided, laser guided, and even your kind of generic GPS guided. But all around the board, it's smart munitions meant to hit exactly what you're looking for. The longsword to me stands out because that low profile futuristic design it has a protruding rear fin, almost fish-like. Beyond just the design, the other thing I thought was cool about it is the fact that it's both an interceptor and a bomber. Each aircraft and spacecraft really is capable of fulfilling the other's roles. The C-712 variant can still strike targets on the ground in the same way that the C-718 can kill other aircraft in the air, but they're both specialized in order to be more efficient. So that's how the longsword is in Halo, but what about its equivalents in the real world? With a surface glance, the longsword to me has always appeared very similar to the B-2. And this might be because of how futuristic the bomber was for its time. I mean, consider the fact that Halo was first developed in the late 90s and early 1000s. The B-2, especially at that point in time, was crazy futuristic. When it was being developed, people would call into the police to report UFO sightings, because how else could you explain what you're looking at? It's a large, incredibly large, and quiet, black triangle with no tail. Outside of maybe a few aerodynamic engineers, most people wouldn't realize that planes don't need tails to fly, but they've been part of its history for so long, if you saw something like the B-2, you wouldn't know what to make of it. That low, flat, flying wing design serves a purpose though. It means it has a very low radar cross-section. Radar, in almost like layman's terms, is like if you were yelling at an aircraft, listening for echoes. The fact that there's no tail or really any kind of protruding vertical section means that the waves of ray, the radar waves, go around it rather than be reflected back. It makes it very hard to detect. Beyond just radar, if you look carefully, the engine outlets, the nozzles for the B-2 are over the wing and rectangular. It serves two different purposes. The fact that it's over the wing means it's very hard to detect the heat energy of the aircraft from below. And its rectangular shape is on purpose. It helps mix the exhaust air with ambient air, cooling it down. It makes it very hard to detect like a heat spike if you're trying to look carefully through the atmosphere to detect it. Both of those combined end up creating an, an aircraft that is very hard to detect, very stealthy. Beyond just the B-2, another interesting aircraft combination I think is very similar to Longsword would be the F-15 family of jets. The F-15C, the C model, is an air dominance fighter. It's a single seat aircraft meant to win the war in the air. But its sister, its cousin, the F-15E, the Strike Eagle, is heavier, which much more of an emphasis on air to surface. 
and it carries two crew members instead of one, with the addition of a weapons officer. Both of them look very similar and are built off the same platform, they just serve different roles, much in the same way as a longsword. The last example I can think of would be the B-1, nicknamed the Bone. It looks like a fighter to the naked eye, but it's significantly larger than any built. And that's because it's a bomber meant for very low altitude, high rates of speed bombing runs. And the purpose there is because it's able to move so fast, so low, it's hard to detect via radar because it hides in the low atmosphere, like under terrain. So it's very hard to see like over hills and whatnot. And it has such a high rate of speed, by the time you do see it, you don't have much of an early warning to defend against it. So how does the real world mesh up with the longsword's design in Halo? Well, there's actually something quite ironic there. The longsword design looks like how it does because Bungie was most likely just looking at the B2 because of how futuristic it was. But what most don't understand is that futuristic B2 design serves a purpose for stealth. And all of our military aircraft in the future are going to start to look like that. In a couple weeks, Northrop Grumman is going to release the B-21. And if you look at it, I imagine you're going to see what looks like a B-2 and like a longsword. No vertical tail. Engine outlets on top of the wings. And that's all different characteristics to make it hard to detect. But beyond just bombers, the Air Force's Next Generation Air Dominance Program, an Air Force program in the U.S. to develop a sixth generation fighter, most of those designs put forth by folks like Northrop Grumman and Lockheed and Boeing, they also don't have tails or vertical stabilizers in an aerodynamic sense. And that's exactly because vertical surfaces like that tend to reflect radar missions back. So by eliminating those and using creative engineering to still make it hyper maneuverable, you're creating fighter and bomber aircraft that are hard to detect that can sneak all the way up onto a target and strike it without being noticed. And so Bungie made the longsword look like a B-2 because they thought it was cool and futuristic, but now all of our future military aircraft are going to look like a longsword. And that's because those designs serve that kind of stealthy purpose. In terms of size, to put it into a comparison, the longsword is about 30% larger than a Strike Eagle, but slightly smaller than a B-1. It sits there in the middle of the two. It weighs roughly the same as the Bone, and its crew complement of 2 to 4 is the same you know, as the Strike Eagle with 2 and the B-1 with 4. The only odd thing about the longsword is its emphasis on guns. You don't really see that in modern day fighters because of the reliance on missiles. You, you have a lot of reasons in lore for that, but at the end of the day, I believe it's just because gunfighting in space looks cooler than shooting missiles. Overall though, while not as popular as the Pelican, the longsword to me has always been part of Halo. I mean, it's been there since CE. I loved it as a kid because of its weird futuristic design. Now that I'm older and I realize like, hey, ironically enough, that's what all military aircraft are gonna look like because it's part of the stealth package. And so in a way, Bungie decided to make an aircraft, a fighter that looks cool and futuristic, but they made one that's incredibly plausible, very realistic. And I wouldn't be shocked if in 10 to 20 years, almost all the aircraft you see in the military end up looking like the longsword itself. If you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more, feel free to like and subscribe. I release them every week. Next week's will be about carrier aircraft and their role in warfare. But in the meantime, I hope everybody has a great weekend and enjoys the holidays. Take care.